Unit 1, Political Systems, Regimes, and Governments Continued, Topic 1.5, Sources of Power and Authority. Again, educational purposes only, mirroring AP Comparative Politics and Government Curriculum. After this topic, you will be able to identify sources of power and authority, explain the similarities and differences between China and Iran sources of power, um, and authority, explain the similarities and differences between Mexico and Nigeria sources of power and authority. And I'm not sure why I left out UK and Russia. So we're going to just do a little cut and paste here. Yes, I was just thinking that Russia and the UK don't matter today, but they do. Okay. All right. Power versus authority. So, just because you have power doesn't mean that the people accept it. Okay. Power is the ability to control others' actions. You can exercise one's will over others to get people to do things they otherwise would not do. You could be a bully. You can have power. It doesn't mean that people accept it. All right. They do it because they're scared. That doesn't make it legitimate power. Authority is the right to control others, but their power is accepted and if you have authority, you're considered legitimate. So let's take this down to basics. If you have a teacher that's constantly yelling at you and telling you you are dumb and they scare you to behave and do your work, they have power. But do you really believe they have your best interest at heart? Do you really think that they have the right to teach you? Therefore, they don't have authority. Okay, they have authority and you're willing to listen to them because you believe they have what um, is in your best interest in mind. So let's go through our six countries and look at the examples of sources of power. Iran, it's going to be religion. Okay, so this is a theocracy. There was a transition of power from a dictator to a theocracy based uh, and our theocracy in Iran is based on Islamic Sharia law, the Shia uh, Shia Muslims, and this is what was instituted after the 1979 revolution. The Ayatollah and other religious leaders in the country. So there's more, you know, there's other religious leaders that run the country and we'll get into them, the Guardian Council and all of that stuff. They have what's known as Juris Guardianship. So they're they have power because the government leaders are responsible for making sure that everybody within the state of Iran reflects Islamic ideals with their, with what they do and how they live their life. The Ayatollah also controls the military. So he has the power to make people follow Islamic tenets because he can suppress any criticism or suppress anybody who's going against Islamic ideals by using his military guard. So an example of this is um, when military suppress public protest after the 2009 Green Revolution in response to what was perceived as the 2009 um, rigged election. And we'll talk more about what the Green Revolution is. China, um, party and military uh, is where Xi Jinping gets his power. He is the head of the Communist Party. He is also the head of the People's Liberation Army, and he can use it to control the population. Um, an example of military suppressing the people, this was not under, let me make this clear, this Tiananmen Square did not happen under Xi Jinping's rule. But in 1989, um, there was a push, um, a public push, and a social movement uh, in China to become not just more like economically liberal and open, but to also be politically liberal and open. And again, remember, these are small L liberals, not like Democrats in the United States liberal, but like open and free economically, so let's be open and free politically. And those protests were countered with the military opening fire and causing a massacre of people. Um, and then the the Uyghur population um, in the um, last 20 years, Uyghurs are a um, ethnicity and religion of people in the Western 
regions of China that um, Muslim and they are they are suppressed by the government because uh, they are not what most people in China are is Han Chinese. These people are um, imprisoned and put through re-education camps to become more like what the CCP or the communist, the Chinese Communist Party would like to, them to be, like more Chinese. So it's important to look at the similarities and differences between these two countries and sources of power because this is comparative government. Iran, um, sources of authority and power is centered on Islam. In China, source of authority and power is centered in the party. Similarly, similarly um, both of these countries use the military um, to maintain their power, and they spend significant amounts of money on their state's budgets on the military. All right, let's go through Mexico. Election reforms. Uh, the transition of power to a multi-party republic following the single party dominance of the PRI. So in the 2000 election, when PAN party candidate Vicente Fox won, okay, uh, you see that um, the election reforms worked. An example of electoral reforms were the gender quotas that I mentioned in the previous video. And the Mexican version of the Federal Election Commission, which monitors election activity, the IFE, making sure that we had free, fair, and competitive elections in Mexico. Mexico does use the military to suppress drug cartel violence. Sources of power in Nigeria, their constitution. The 1999 constitution, which was used to make sure that um, the pre president Obensanjo did not try to extend his term as president. Um, it, it used checks and balances on the executive branch to make sure that Obisanjo did not become an authoritarian ruler. Okay, so um, the Constitution withheld that little challenge. Um, so there's also the transition of power to the multi-party republic following military rule. Again, talked about the 2015 election in the previous notes where there was a peaceful transfer of power. I don't know why I've like capitalized peaceful here and didn't put a period here and capitalize the there just and didn't put a period here or a period here or a period here or a period there. Don't know why grammar. I need to make sure my grammar is working. All right. Do, um, they Nigeria does use the military to suppress violence from ethnic conflict and environmental protest groups, which we'll talk about those environmental protest groups later. Um, so Mexico, uh, source of power, recovering from one party rule by the pre. Nigeria transitioning from military control with a focus on checking an executive. So that's like source of power. Similarly, there's peaceful transfers of power. All right, Russia. Russia's power is really Putin, who is backed by political elites. Okay. Um, there are elections, but it is very clear that the election rules are going to favor one party, Putin's party, United Russia. They do use the military to maintain power um, and to include the invasion of Ukraine and the suppression of ethnic and religious violence in um, Islamic regions like Chechnya. United Kingdom, their source of power is the Constitution and parliamentary sovereignty. Parliamentary sovereignty means in the United Kingdom, the Parliament, the House of the People, House of Commons, um, what what the House of Commons decides goes. Okay, so parliamentary sovereignty, um, which allow for constitutional reforms, those constitutional reforms devolved power or gave power to regional parliaments like the Scottish, um, Scottish region, Wales, Northern Ireland. And that kind of made those regions happy and allowed for there to be stability in the UK. So that's what I just said. Similarities and differences. Russia spends a lot of their budget on the military to maintain power. 
The UK has kind of taken the devolving power to regional government approach. Similarities, one branch holds most of the power. So like, um, again, the executive branch in Russia holds most of the power. And in the United Kingdom, the parliament holds most of the power.